Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. The president is rallying supporters as we speak in Colorado Springs. We're monitoring his remarks for breaking news and we'll go there if it occurs. But for now, here's the question. What can you buy with $460 million? Well, of course, you could buy a lot of things. You could buy a Boeing 747 if you wanted one. You could build an entire NFL stadium. You could get a pack of peanut M&Ms for every single person in this country. Or you could take all that money and use it to get humiliated by Elizabeth Warren on national television. And that's what Michael Bloomberg did last night. Maybe on some level, he enjoyed it. We don't want to speculate here, though Bloomberg wouldn't be the first rich liberal with unusual personal tastes. But either way, Warren was happy to play along. You've probably already seen the clips already, but this is one of those exchanges worth replaying again and again and again. Elizabeth Warren just spanked him like the bad little billionaire he is, vigorously. Watch. I'd like to talk about who we're running against. A billionaire who calls women fat broads and horse-faced lesbians. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mayor Bloomberg. <laughs> Democrats are not going to win if we have a nominee who has a history of hiding his tax returns, of harassing women, and of supporting racist policies. Democrats take a huge risk if we just substitute one arrogant billionaire for another. You wonder how often Bloomberg pays to get yelled at like that. Pretty expensive role playing. At one point, Mistress Elizabeth even forced Bloomberg to admit he wouldn't allow estranged female employees to speak honestly about their time working for him. Watch. He has gotten some number of women, dozens, who knows, to sign non-disclosure agreements, both for sexual harassment and for gender discrimination in the workplace. So, Mr. Mayor, are you willing to release all of those women from those non-disclosure agreements so we can hear their side of the story? If they wish now to speak out and tell their side of the story about what it is they allege, that's now okay with you? You're releasing them on television tonight? S Senator, no. <laughs> Holy smokes. Makes you wonder about Elizabeth Warren's husband back home. Remember when she revealed that she was the one who asked for his hand in marriage? He said, yes, of course. It was an offer he couldn't refuse. In the face of a woman like that, Mike Bloomberg just crumbled. Suddenly, he didn't look like one of the world's richest men. He looked old and weak. Warren rattled him so completely, Bloomberg could barely function. He couldn't explain his own candidacy. He made apologies for his record. At one point, Bloomberg bragged about cutting New York City's crime rate in half and then almost instantly disavowed the policy that made it possible. Well, if I go back and look at my time in office, the one thing that I'm um, really worried about, embarrassed about, was how it turned out um, with stop and frisk. How bad was it? Well, even on the most obvious question, the one he had to know was coming, how can someone as rich as you relate to normal voters? Bloomberg whiffed it. Apparently, the army of consultants he's hired to write his lines forgot to prepare him for it. Maybe Bloomberg just got sick of being self-deprecating and decided to revert to his real personality, which is grating and pompous. Either way, his answer sounded suspiciously like boasting. Because when you're as spectacularly successful as Michael Bloomberg is, April 15th isn't like most people's April 15ths. You don't use TurboTax. <laughs> Fortunately, I make a lot of money and we do business all around the world, and we are preparing it. The, the, the number no. of pages will probably be thousands of pages. I can't go to TurboTax. Oh, but it didn't get better from there. The conversation then turned to China. Now, Bloomberg knows a lot about China. He's beginning rich there and defending its fascist government for many years. He censored his own news organization to protect that country's corrupt leadership. Last night, not surprisingly, he was still acting like China's publicist. When asked about China's carbon emissions, the largest in the world by far, Bloomberg claimed that India was, quote, a bigger problem, which is a total crock. You've got Google. Check it yourself. China emits 29 percent of the world's carbon, twice as much as here in the U.S., and that number is still rising, not falling. India, the bigger problem, accounts for just 7 percent of the world's carbon emissions. Yeah. But Bloomberg's Chinese masters are no doubt pleased by the lie he told on their behalf. By the end of the night, Bloomberg had failed so completely, so utterly, that his odds of winning the Democratic nomination dropped by a third on the betting site predicted. Even the analysts on cable news, many of whom secretly hoped to work for Michael Bloomberg one day, had to admit his performance was world-historic awful, 
really a new low in the history of spoken English. Gloria Borger, what's the big headline? Bloomberg was awful. This was a disaster. Uh, for Bloomberg. They tore the skin off him yesterday, uh, yeah. last night in Las Vegas. I thought it was a very bad night for him. He's probably doubling the salaries of his staff who want to go into the spin room because I wouldn't want to go in there and defend him after the night that he had. It was a devastating introduction to Mike Bloomberg, for Mike Bloomberg, to a lot of America. Bloomberg went in as the Titanic, <laughs> billion-dollar machine Titanic. Titanic meet iceberg Elizabeth Warren. There's no question that she could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Trump. She left Bloomberg in a puddle on that debate stage. Mm -hmm. All true for once. Bloomberg ate it last night. But here's the question. Does it actually matter? That's what we're thinking about. And the answer is it doesn't really matter. Bloomberg hurt him, but she didn't help herself much. Not a single person watching last night wants to listen to her for the next four years. Gosh. Meanwhile, Bloomberg is still enormously rich, and he's still blanketing daytime television with his ads. Far more Americans will see Bloomberg's commercials than watched last night's debate. That's just the truth of it. So for all the highly entertaining moments, the debate didn't really change the race. Bernie Sanders is still the frontrunner this morning, hard as that is to believe. And if anything, Sanders is becoming less impressive as he rises in the polls. Last night, for example, Sanders lamely tried to claim that his famously aggressive online supporters, the one who are supposedly harassing opponents on Twitter, might actually be secret Russian agents trying to sow discord in the Democratic Party. <laughs> Sanders said that on stage. Unfortunately, people running the debate were too dumb to notice it, so nobody asked a follow-up question, and we're all the poorer for that. Meanwhile, the various Democratic also-ran spent their evening savaging each other. Boy, did they. Amy Klobuchar who's supposed to be Midwestern and nice, took a ball-peen hammer to Lego candidate Pete Buttigieg. Watch this. You're staking your candidacy on your Washington experience. You're on the committee that oversees border security. You're on the committee that does trade. You're literally in uh, part of the committee that's overseeing these things. And we're not able to speak to literally the first thing about the politics of the country you, to ourselves. Are you trying to say that I'm dumb or are you mocking me here, Pete? I wish everyone is, was as perfect as you, Pete, but let me tell you what it's like to be in the arena. I'm actually so right. proud of of the work I've done on immigration reform. And you know what? You have not been in the arena doing that work. You've memorized a bunch of talking points and a bunch of things. Wow. So that was real. She clearly hates him. And good for her, by the way. He's awful. He's the fakest guy in the race. Not that it matters. Neither one of them is going anywhere in the end. By the end of the night, things got so fractious on stage, they couldn't even agree to unite behind the candidate who got the most votes. Think about that for a minute. These are the same people who are always lecturing you about how the Electoral College is racist, and all that matters is the popular vote. But of course, they never meant that. The only person who means it is Bernie Sanders, and the only reason he means it is because, in this case, he's the only one who can benefit from that standard. At this point, it's hard to see how anybody gets the majority of Democratic primary votes, but Sanders is still likely to have the most at the end. So in a typical year, that would make Sanders the Democratic nominee, but that's not the case this year. So who wins? Who's the nominee? That's something our friends in the Democratic Party are going to have to figure out at their convention in Milwaukee four months from now, and good luck with that.